All right, so yeah, we're gonna be going through how to beat um, Pokemon gems um, easier. Um, and I'm gonna show you the different ways that they put Pokemon in certain places in the game to make sure you can get through the gems easier. And the f reason I decided to make this video is because as I was playing through Emerald again um, as an adult, I hadn't played since I was a child, so I forgot really how to play the game or get how what the game was like. And when I got to Watson, I realized that, hey, Watson is actually pretty tough. I was literally stuck trying to beat Watson. And I said, I do not remember this as a kid being stuck trying to beat Watson. So this made me take a step back and say, let me start over the game and take my time and try to understand what was it that I missed when I was just running through the game. I said I had to miss something because there's no way Watson was this hard. When I went onto the internet, like YouTube, I found there were plenty of videos that actually mentioned Watson being a, a tough gym leader and probably one of the tougher ones in Pokemon Emerald. So the funny thing is, so I, I decided to do that. I said, okay, well, let me go ahead and find out what I can do differently. And that's what that's exactly what I did. I played the game again and tried finding ways that the developers really had stuff set up for you to get through Watson easier than what we thought he was. And I'm going to show you here what to do to get through Watson um, very easily. Um, you can actually just get a Pokemon. You just catch the right Pokemon. You just pretty much one shot everything um, on Watson's team, believe it or not. And this has nothing to do with you picking a Swampert starter. You don't have to have Swampert or the water starter. We actually picked the fire starter, which does have a little bit of type advantage it could use if you needed to fight with it. But we're not going to be fighting with the starter at all in that battle. As you can see, even right now, the starter is the lowest level Pokemon. And where we're at in the story so far is um, we have defeated the first gym leader using a low tad. So that's one thing there. If you get the low tad in the beginning of the game, get that to at least level 4. 13 to 15. 15 it will evolve into Lombre, but if you get it to level 13, um, you can go into the fight. Might use a few potions, but you'll get through the first gym leader just fine if you chose the Torchic as your starter. And then also make sure you catch the Taylo in the beginning of the game too, in the first route, because your Taylo, as you can see, um, is mine is level 17. It's easy to level up the Taylo in the um, in the first part of the game. And the Taylo, what that's going to do is allow you to beat the second gym leader a lot easier. Uh, so we got the HM Flash, and we're going to go right into the second gym leader fight. We're not really grinding levels either, so that's something that you're going to notice. Uh, this is this is cool too. Actually, I forgot. They give you a silk scarf here, and this is a really good move to use on your... I mean, this is a really good item to, for you to give to your, your Taylo. I forgot about that. Um, the Silk Scarf is going to make your quick attack very strong because, as you can see, Taylo is a normal and flying type Pokemon. Silk Scarf boosts the attack power of your normal type moves, and quick attack is a normal type move. So it makes your quick attack, you're basically multiplying that quick attack's damage by almost, by more, a little bit over double there. So quick attack is very strong when you do that combination there in the beginning. And I think they meant to do that. Um, they usually do a lot of things and how they program this game is very intentional. That's the funny thing about it. And I never noticed this stuff as a kid, which now makes these games actually seem a lot more amazing going back through the older games and realizing they put things in the game that would have made it easier if we would have just somehow figured it out because back then when those these games were coming out you definitely had to figure out most things you didn't just um couldn't just go look on the internet for everything they did have messaging boards and stuff but it just wasn't as common so with the second gym battle here as we're using the Taylo, which you could have had this at level 19 it would have been a little bit more optimal um, focus energy in the beginning against the Machop just so that you're ready for the entire battle. You have the higher chance of getting your critical hits when needed. And that, that Karate Chop is going to hurt. 
Um, so what we're going to do, since he just healed, we're actually going to heal as well. Uh, because he might do something like a pump up. But he does go for another chop. I'm just going to heal again. Uh, let's see what he does. Another chop. And so I'll heal again until he does another move. And so he's just chopping me because he thinks I'm going to, you know, faint. Okay. Well, either way, let's go ahead and wing attack because we're faster. And the reason we just want to keep the table alive because we already focused energy. So now that we got the focus energy for the, ready for the fight, that's going to make sure we get the critical hit here on Makuhita because you really do want to get a critical hit on the Makuhita. So there, it happened there. Perfect. That's usually what happens. And maybe there's a heightened chance of you getting a critical hit on the Makuhita. They may be playing that, that way. We're going to get rid of Growl and add the double team. Just helps add some survivability to Talo because it is a fragile Pokemon. So there you go. We went through the second gym leader. We fought one of the the uh, people along the way just because I couldn't remember how to get there. They're going to give us the TM08 bulk up, which is really good for raising a Pokemon's um, attack and defense. So another thing that I found is I'm going to show you one of the Pokemon they meant for you to use the bulk up on early in the game as well. Because this is stuff I just figured out on my own when I just started paying attention more. It's so crazy. It's so crazy because this stuff was always in the game. And as a child, I would have never um, figured this stuff out. So we're going to have to use Flash. We'll give Lombre the Flash instead of the Growl. So we're upgrading, getting all our Growls out of the system. So now I'm going to show you what... Um, what Pokemon you're gonna need to beat Watson? It's actually in this. Um... Okay, so this is good. I might knock it out. I need to switch Pokemon. So the Makuhita is actually, you notice, in the same town where you get your your bulk up. It's actually supposed to be used for Makuhita, and this Makuhita is gonna help you beat Norman later on in the game. So it's funny how they set stuff up. This Makahita will can wipe through the entire Norman team, but he actually does need bulk up to be able to sweep um through the slack off. That's the funny thing. The bulk up is in, is in imperative for you to get through the slack off without it being able to um well not what is it called? It's not called slack off, but you know what I'm talking about. His evolution. Whatever his evolution is. Yo, what's up, Arcanine? What you up to, man? So, this Makahita is actually for Norman. We're going to name him Norman. And so, this is the funny stuff. Like I say, I would have never known this as, as a kid. Like, they put all the Pokemon right in front of you that you need to fight the gems and beat them with, like, one hits and all this stuff. But you'd have to be really smart to figure this stuff out, especially back when these games came out. They gave you strategy guides. I don't even think the strategy guys would have told you stuff like this, like, hey, make sure you catch the Makuhita after the second gym because you teach bulk up to Makuhita once you beat the second gym leader, which will help you beat the fifth gym leader. It, like, this is this is wild. So, look, like, you catch that Makuhita. Yeah, where the crappy man? I'm inside too, man, just gaming. So, yeah, you teach that bulk up, you see? That's the only Pokemon that you would have caught. Well, there's a few Pokemon. There's not that many Pokemon that you could catch by this time that would learn bulk up, but Makuhita is one. And we're not going to worry about Makuhita's level for right now. The escape rope, that give, they give that to you for a reason because they want you to be able to get out of this cave very quickly once you talk to Steven. So it's like everything has a purpose and we just never realized it. So... Yeah, they're giving you another monkey eater there, which we don't need. Um, but like I said, also the Pokemon that we do need to fight Watson is in the cave from the second gym. So it's in this cave. And that's the funny thing. All this time, we've been thinking Watson's super hard to beat. Um, he's not, actually. And I'm going to show you why. Yo, I'm getting roasted by a little man right here. Let me back up. Getting roasted by a little guy. Jeez. Do I got any more potions? I forgot to buy potions too. I got super potion. That sucks. You're gonna make me use a super potion. Um 
Yeah, Aaron, Aaron, man, a Aaron almost got me. Disable Eye. So this is another thing. Disable Eye could be used to beat the seventh gym leader if you decide to catch it now and level it up through the story. But I'm gonna go a different route for the seventh gym leader, so they won't even let me escape because they know I'm running out. Of po Don't do this to me. Don't be embarrassing me in front of my people like this. Rock Smash, you do not have the Rock Smash TM just yet, so you can't do anything about that. Yo, the A-Ron. He's A-A-Ron up there leveled. Um, why are they giving me a bunch of A-A-Rons? They're not even giving me the Pokemon that we need to beat Steven. And you could use that Pokemon to beat, um, I mean, Watson. You could, but it's not optimal. And here, if you needed an Everstone, you touch this rock, you press A, you'll get an Everstone, which is... To me, useless. I don't know why you would want to give something an Everstone. The Zubat, um, there's nothing special that I found out would make Zubat very useful. Except if maybe you wanted to use it later in the game to fight off the 7th gym leader. You could catch it and start leveling now. Like I said, they put a lot of stuff in here so that way the game shouldn't be hard if you caught the Pokemon they wanted you to catch and level the Pokemon they wanted you to catch. But it just doesn't work that way. We know when we play Pokemon games, you just catch whatever you think's interesting. You fight with it. You don't. You don't know that that Pokemon might be useless in the gym later on. And so you just you just do whatever. But it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Like they they give you everything. Um. So we're we're making our way to Steven, and they still haven't given us the Pokemon we're looking for. All right. Yeah, that's right. Whatever looks cool, we just roll with it. it. Like, it's not about, oh, I'm gonna need this Pokemon to beat this gym leader. Like, if we knew that, yeah, we would have caught it. Yeah, we would have tried leveling up. And I'm gonna show you some, some Pokemon that they put in the game. There's some parts of the Pokemon they give you to beat certain things that actually are hard to level up and do suck. But if you use it, it actually gets you through a gym leader quicker. So um, I gave the letter to Steven. The funny thing is, this is one of the first times I walked all the way over to Steven. And I still have not found the, the Pokemon that I needed. Um, so that's interesting. So I'm not going to use the escape rope just yet. I'm just waiting for my uh, the Pokemon to spawn first. And they keep giving me the AA runs, which you could use that. I remember when I first played. Oh, boy. I remember when I first played through, you can't mud slap this. So you see how that has mud slap? Mud slap can be used to pretty much damage all of Watson's team when we get to the third gem. But it's not it's not a stab attack because AA Ron actually yeah, AA Ron isn't ground. That's where I messed up when I first played back through it again as an adult. Is um getting A Ron because of the steel typing. But then he doesn't have a stab ground attack. And you need a stab ground attack. Like, you're going to see why all of our attacks are going to be so powerful against um, against Watson, which is considered one of the hardest gym leaders in Emerald outside of Norman. Um, and Norman is going to be super easy because we just caught the Makahita. So that's what I'm telling you right now. The funny part is how back then we thought Norman was super hard. If you would just caught this Makahita in the beginning of the game, you wouldn't even know what hard was when it came to fighting Norman. So that's going to be funny if I'm able to get there. Um, it does take a lot of stuff we got to do before we can get to Norman because he is the fifth gym leader. Um, I do have potions, but I try not to use potions except for trainer battles because they cost money and... Um, I'm trying to not speed through the game, but get through the game kind of fast. So that's not the same thing. Like, I, I'm not. I want to make sure I preserve some money until, like, it gets to the harder parts of the game. Put it that way. Yo, they're not giving me the spawn. That is so crazy. I've never seen this. Why is it not spawning? It's giving me everything but what I need. It's because I'm trying to show you something. That is so whack. Let me just stay here. 
Yo, they are cheating. You got you got to get the Pokemon from this cave though. I'm trying to think. Is it another place they give it to you to? Maybe, but this is the best place to catch it. I'm gonna show you why this is the best place to catch it. Yo, what what are these spawns they giving me? Horrible, horrible Pokemon. Finally. So believe it or not, this is what you're supposed to catch. You're supposed to catch a Geodude because you're going to have him at Graveler. And so he going to, oh my gosh, a crit. Okay. Oh man, what? So yeah, you, you're supposed to catch the Graveler because you, I mean the goal, the dang, I'm saying all the evolutions. You're supposed to catch that Geodude because by the time from soon as we catch the Geodude all the way up until we get to that next gym boss, he's actually going to be a Graveler. And I'm going to show you how it's going to be easy to get him from like level 9 to level 25 because you got a lot of trainer battles in between um, the second gym badge we just got and the third gym badge. So um, if I can get the spawn again, they, they acting like Geodude is a rare spawn. And I'm using Astonish, one of the weakest tags. This is weaker than Tackle, I think. I think this is weaker than Tackle. And Geodude. Oh, whoa, what the? I think I know why. Let me let me talk to you about. Oh, no, it's, it's, I got Miracle Seed on him, which is for grass. Astonish is 30. Yeah, I think a Tackle is 35. How in the heck am I knocking out a Geodude? How in the heck am I knocking out a Geodude with an Astonish? Like a critical hit Astonish twice in a row. Like, yo, the game is listening to me and they are trolling. They are trolling. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. The first, they don't want to give me the spawn. I walk all the way through the cave without getting spawn. Now, look. So, this is very inconvenient right here. This is very inconvenient. I'm trying to get through this quick. Because yeah, I know y'all want to see that Makahita in action. That Makahita, he going to blow through Norman. And then you go on YouTube and watch videos about how Norman was the harder, one of the hardest gym leaders in, in Aeromote. You're going to laugh when I show you. Some of these gym leaders weren't even intended to be that hard When if we only knew. We only knew which Pokemon we were supposed to be using, which moves we were supposed to teach them. If we knew that we were supposed to give the bulk up to Makahita straight out the gate. But as you can see right now, they even give me Abra spawns over. You know Abra I'm supposed to show up for nothing. Not Abra. If I, if I had the ability to trade in Alakazam, it would be a very useful Pokemon on the team, but... Um, I don't have any way to trade it to make it evolve. And so, um, unfortunately, I'm sitting here trying to get, get a dude that doesn't want to show up. And this is why I've never seen this before. They're actually treating Geodude like it's a rare spawn. And maybe, maybe it is. I don't know the spawn rates in, in this game. Uh, I'd have to look it up, but it sh I shouldn't have to. It's just a Geodude, Pokemon that shows up in pretty much every every game in the caves pretty frequently. And I, I think the more I'm saying his name is causing it not to come out. It's like the opposite of Candyman. Oh my, so many Makahitas. See, they want to make sure you don't miss that Makahita. Exactly, going to mess around and find a shiny. See, this is, yo, they got hate for me today. They got hate for me today, bro. Like, what is this? Oh my! I, I'm, I'm not making this up. I've never been trolled this much. Usually, I just come in the cave, get my Geodude, and just keep move. What is this? I might, I might have to walk out of this cave and walk back in or something. Re maybe that resets the spawn rates or something. What? In the Whoa! Okay, okay. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this. All right. Take a breath. Take a breath, Emerald. There you go. All right, come on, come on. Get yourself together. Geodude, Geodude, Geodude. Let's go. Let's go. Geodude, Geodude. Oh, my. Okay, come on, come on. Lombre. 
I know you would think I'm shiny hunting now if you just turned into this tuned in or something. But this is this is wild. I am increasing the rate that I get a shiny Zubat or Makahita to all these encounters. Look at this. This is dumb. This is dumb. Let me go in another room of the cave. Maybe it, maybe it spawns more likely in another room. It might not. The spawn rate might not be high in this room because the Aeron spawn in the other room. The Geodudes probably spawn more, even though I did get two Geodudes out of this room. But just wild. You see, the Aerons are going to come up here. I really don't want you, bro. I could astonish you, but you were faster that time. I was about to say, if I make you flinch now, nah, I'll catch you. Yeah, the level 9s are faster. Oh, no, I'm faster than that level 9. Mm. Come on, come on. They giving me arrows like Good. teleport out of here. Somebody don't want you. Yo, yo, what's going on? What's going on? This is this is wild. I gotta keep the lombre in though. That's the only thing I can use to really get the geodudes like I want. I, I I'm I'm sorry. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Yo, it's actually like it makes it look as if Geodude's not even in this cave. Like if I'm trying to show you something and I'm trying to say, look, catch Geodude in this cave. It's actually pretending like, yo, Geodude's not even in this cave, bro. What are you talking about? I could astonish you, but eh, come on. What am I? I? I knocked out those two Geodudes and that was it. And then that was also a weird occurrence. Like using one of the weakest um, attacks in the game and that you have in the beginning. And it gives me a crit against a Geodude that has high defense. Geodude is one of the highest, um, you know, high defense uh, creatures from the beginning of the game. And still knocked out due to uh due to an astonish out of all attacks i get lombre's level 17 though but I, I whoa i did something wrong here there's no way they just don't give you a geodudes i gotta stop saying his name i gotta stop saying his name he who shall not be named. He who shall not be named. Where are you? I don't think they want me to win this time. They're trying to challenge me to see if I can find another way to beat Watson. And th th that's not what that's not what this video is about. This video is about the number one, the number one way to beat Watson, without Swampert. Like you don't have to choose the water ground starter to beat Watson with one shots. And I'm going to show you why. It don't matter what your, what your starter is. Actually, most of the game doesn't matter which, what your starter is. Level 9, so he should he should get take more hits. And I might catch you in the yellow, bro. It's good. Use that defense curl. I'm going to catch you in the yellow, man. I'm not even, I'm not even playing. You, you look like you strong, too. You're level 9. Good. That's one less level we got to worry about, bro. Welcome to the team. Your other family members couldn't help, uh, handle the job. They they applied, and they wasn't, they wasn't fit for it. All right. So we finally got the Geodude. So now you're able to beat Watson. Very easy. And believe it or not, the next area is set up so that you can level up Geodude very easily, too. Like I said, there is a bunch of stuff in here that sets it up so that way well, the game does not have to be hard at all. Um, Geodude, usually, he does come with an item a lot of times, and it's always Everstone. But we're going to give him the Quick Ball that we got, the Quick Claw that you get from the first town. Because he is slower, and you want to give him a chance to be able to speed past some of the wild Pokemon we're going to fight in this area. So that way you can get some easier experience without taking damage. So you're going to see it's going to be very easy to level up Geodude. And look at this. So we just got Geodude, right? 
which we know is a ground type Pokemon, which ground tears up electric. Okay, ground type Pokemon. The first thing you get off this boat to come over here, guess what? You get soft sand. I forgot about that. I, I didn't forget, but you get soft sand. So look, the game's giving you everything. You got a ground type Pokemon? Give it the soft sand because it raises the power of ground type moves that you're going to use against Watson. So give the Geodude the soft sand. So now, even though you're going to be using super effective type ground moves on Watson, they give you the soft sand to even boost your damage against Watson. But how will we know that this was what they were preparing us for? Even this bird Pokemon here. Funny thing about it, this first trainer that you meet on the beach, yes, Wingo can decimate a Geodude. But the funny thing is, Wingo also loses to Geodude as well because it's a, a rock type. Let me let me double check. Does Geodude have his rock throw yet? I think he learns at 11. Yeah, so he doesn't have his rock throw yet. But... Yeah, on the beach, these Wingles, they can lose to Geodudes. Um, it's a little risky because you can get Water Gun and that will knock out your Geodude. A lot of these Water Pokemon are definitely risky to, to battle against. Um, if you wanted to, you could another safe play here. Is to bring out your your low tad. You could bring out your low tad again. Um, that that helps. You can get super effective damage on some of these. Now the wingles, no, the wingles wouldn't help you. It wouldn't help you as much. But um, so he's using the zigzagoon, and I'm using absorb. I got a miracle seed. So the miracle seed um, can help. You could teach your lombre bullet seed before you get here if you wanted to. Give it a, a higher chance of doing more damage with a grass type attack. And then, so there we go. We got Pokenap. So, this is a setup here. Um, let's see, we got our okay, we got our Pokemon lined up for the double battle. And that's one cool thing about this game is it has tons of double battles in it. And here we've got opportunity, we're going to absorb that. And then wing attack here. And the tentacle, surprisingly, it actually pat, um, fainted from that. I didn't think it was going to faint. Um, nature power, I guess. We'll just see what nature power does here in this environment. Okay. Is this a swift? This is an earthquake. Interesting. Well, I'm glad I've got my, my Talo. Because then, of course, our earthquake isn't going to do anything. Very interesting. Okay. So I got to be careful when I'm using that nature power with, uh, with the Lombre. Alright. So then they're giving you their numbers. You never come back and fight these people ever. Beep, beep. So, yeah, the Roxanne is always going to hit you up right here. Yep, gym leader Roxanne. They always, she always hits you up right there. Alright, so... Boom. So like like I said, you got the Geodude. Um, you're going to come in here. Uh, before you go there, um, walk into the shipyard place here. You're going to talk to this guy here. That's Doc. He's going to talk about Devin Goods and Captain Stern. When you do that talk, it gets all these people away from the museum. You can go into the museum. Talk to this first guy here. For Team Aqua, he's going to give you the TM for Thief. You can teach it to your bird Pokemon, which you already have by now because you use it to beat the second gym. Steel Wink, you can teach to your bird Pokemon, or you can teach to your first Pokemon that you use to beat the gym. So there's like a bunch of stuff here that it gives you. So if you wanted to teach Thief to, to your Lombre, you could. So, like, they're giving you all the stuff that you could use here. Want to teach Steel Wing to your only flying Pokemon that beat the second gym? You could do that. 
so we'll get rid of focus energy um, rock tomb you could teach to your starter actually if you wanted to or any of these Pokemon here you could teach rock tomb to but we're not gonna need to do that um, so we go upstairs we talk to Captain Stern we deliver the information that we're supposed to deliver and then it's gonna go ahead and initiate the other fight with the team aqua members here Carvana is going to be weak to grass. We got a Miracle Seed on the, the Lombre. And so this will be an easy fight. We heal up from attacking them. And then we got Lombre at level 18. And this, I think the Lombre takes a, a grass, a, a leaf stone to evolve. So we'll be able to evolve that a little bit later. Um, and that's a good idea too, is to start with Lombre just because it at nature power. Gives a swift... It turns out to be a critical hit, which is very favorable for us because they've already been giving us some bad luck and we really deserve it. We deserve this good luck here. And then the Carvana faints because I'm a level 18 Lombre. And now we're done with Team Aqua. This person comes in here, the, the boss, and then he just kind of, they just leave. They scramble. You don't fight him yet. You'll, you'll get a chance to, to fight him later. And so then he hands over to Devin Goods. And now, um, what you do is you can leave out of here. And once you leave out of here, um, you, you'll t get the little guy that's mysterious that keeps talking to you everywhere. He finally registers you in his PokeNav. Once he registers you in your PokeNav, if you want, I mean, you could you could heal up here, just just because. And then what we're gonna need to do is go back we're going to get the xp share because this is going to help us level up specific pokemon that are going to be useful later in the game and so they were telling you to come back there when you get the tm secret power which we are going to get but let's go closer around the seventh gym six seventh gym by the time you get that so um what we're going to do now is go back you don't have to do this part of the story believe it or not you could just continue to go forward through the story and fight the gems and go through the rest of the story like normal, but this is better. You go back to Mount Brenny. I mean, Mr. Brenny, he'll take you here. You got to go here just for him to sell you back to the other island, which you originally had him sell from where his house is at. And from here, we'll go back and see the president because you want to tell the president, hey, I ran all your errands for you. And then as a return gift, um, let's see, what else, what items do we have right now? We'll use the repel just in this, this area. So we don't get slowed down too much here. All right, good. So we didn't get slowed down there. On the way back, it should be easy because we can hop over the um, obstacles and all that stuff. I really feel like I do need some potions. Let me double check where my potions are at anyway. I'm at one potion there. I'm at two. Let's just get the super potions. Pokeballs. I did use a few. I probably don't need that many Pokeballs at all. Escape rope. I usually try to keep one. Repel. I'm going to replenish those just because that can come in handy. And yeah, we're going to go back and that's not the place with the president. So we're going to come back up here, talk to the president. The reason why this is important is he gives you experience share. Experience share. So that way we're able to level up multiple Pokemon at one time, which really back then in these games, we know that that was just two Pokemon, one, one extra Pokemon at a time would get the extra experience versus nowadays in the newer Pokemon games, we're getting experience share on all Pokemon by default. Which I, I do like that because sometimes it is a pain to go back through your box and try to pick Pokemon to specifically level up. So it did change a lot of painful parts of Pokemon. Um, however, we're going to get ready to... I'm going to probably get that to Makahita, believe it or not, once we get settled in our new area. I want to make sure we can, we can focus on getting the... Uh, here we go. I want to make sure we can focus on getting my my geodude to where it needs to be first 
and then we might start sharing experience from there because um, the rest of the story gets a little bit easier for certain parts where we don't need to do be so strict so let's try to get to where we need to be first because right, I forgot some stuff with really getting Geodude to 25 that I may need to focus more experience on him first for him to get his rock throw once his rock throw or his um and then his ground type attack yeah I definitely need his ground type attack So we at least need him to get to level 11 because that's going to be the rock throw. And then the ground type attack will come after that. I don't know what level. I think 15. So, um, yeah. So when you get to this little wild area here, you can actually use Geodude in this area and he'll do just fine. This little area. Because um, those Pokemon, that's Mud Sport. You don't, you don't want that. So like a Puchaina, his his tackles are not very effective against Geodude. So this makes that's what makes this a good spot to level your Geodude even though Geodude's under leveled. The Electrite is the most optimal thing you can level against right here, just because you can't get paralyzed. And the tackles aren't gonna do anything. Well when I say you can't get paralyzed, obviously I mean the Thunder Waves don't do anything. So most of the stuff that the Electrikes will try to do to you won't really do much. And see, they'll be doing Thunder Waves and stuff like that. Um, Paralyze doesn't hurt as much. It's just, yeah, it could use up some of your turns. But this is good. You want to kind of grind just a little bit with Geodude right here. At least to level 11 is my recommendation. Now the Oddish, you don't want to fight those. That's why. So I tried to run. And of course, this is knows I'm trying to do something. It's like, we're not going to let you run and then show us up. So get payback. Get a one shot on YouTube, boy. Don't be playing with me like that. But, um, yeah, we're going to go back to the same area. And then, like I said, you want to you wanna level the Geodude to at least level 11 before moving on. You could push it further, honestly, if you you have more patience 13 maybe would be even optimal see because like um ugh. yeah i don't want to fight that honestly you want to fight the electrikes if possible because they're going to be the easier time see their tackles don't really do much at all their, their tackles are going to do one damage to you I mean, yeah, they could lower your defense a little bit. This one has high defense. And to be honest, we should catch this Electrite. But there's going to be another opportunity to catch Electrites later in, in the game. Right before you could find it useful. So uh, we got level 11. So we got Rock Throw. All right, so we're going to move forward a little bit more. Um, I'm not going to use any items right now. I mostly want to use the items when I go to the the gems. Um, so I can't remember if it's good to have Geodude as a lead right here. To be honest, I'm forgetting some parts of the game. All right, so Professor Birch just randomly encounters us. He sets us up in a match call system. All right, and that that's fine. Um, let's see if this was a bad idea, lead. Leading with Geodude here. We got the plus and the minus. So here I don't think the Geodude's a bad option, but um but definitely not having the Talo out there just to get fried. Because they're using helping hand and growl. Okay, so I probably could have scored a knockout with with one of those. Oh nature's power. What is the nature power here? Swift. Yo, they've got some good defense here. I remember they reduced our attack too, though. Fake out. Fake out is is good for double battles. But um, we're not going to use it. Let's see how much damage this one does.
So yeah, I could have kept loving that Geodude in that area until I got my... Until I got my ground type attack. And you know, we might we might go back to that little small area there and do that. Just because it's very beneficial for Geodude to get that, that magnitude um, in his moveset early. And that, that's what we're going for here is trying to get the magnitude. Because when you, when you um, spoiler alert, when you get to Watson, all you're going to do as Graveler is just, you're just going to magnitude your way through the whole thing, which is going to be super effective because the fact that you have the soft sand, the fact that you're doing stab damage because Geodude's a ground type Pokemon. So all these factors go into play to make you uh, one shot them. And just want to get to that point so I can I can really show you. And here, just Rock Thorn. We're using a lot of moves to get through this these pluses, plus these. I don't know how to pronounce them. I, as old as these Pokemon are, I still never really knew how to pronounce their names. Um, so that's that's crazy. But they're making us use up so much PP. What we're going to do is we're going to go back. Pokemon Center. Um, I might have Geodude probably grind out like one or two more levels in that, that small area. Which like I said here, I'm trying to show you how to get through it without grinding a whole lot. You mostly can fight trainers. You don't usually have to grind while Pokemon to get through most of the game believe it or not there are there is one area where i do recommend grinding wild pokemon just so you can see something cool that i, I don't think other most other players are going to experience when they played emerald because it's just a little bit of work and of course that's the whole meaning of grinding is to get do a little bit of work but it, i think it's kind of cool to see to play the game in a way that they meant it meant you to play it so i'm get, when we get to that part later though First, let's let's keep our our eyes on the goal here. We're training this Geodude. So the answer is Geodude. You're gonna get him to evolve to level 25, and so we're gonna stay here until we get to level 15. This is the recommended the recommended thing to do. Get your Geodude to level 15 before you leave this area, because you're gonna learn Magnitude on level 15, and you get a lot of experience in this area. Look at that 193. So you really only have to grind very minimally, and this will be a one hit KO for either one of us, I believe. But he didn't use a water type attack, so. Oh, uh, Wingo doesn't learn water gun until 13, so we're safe here. So this is, like I said, this is a really safe leveling spot for Geodude. So that's why you're supposed to really stay here to get your Ge Geodude's levels up. Like I said, they planned this out when they designed the game. Game Freak are some really good game designers. They planned this out so that way you had a way for Geodude to fight some wild Pokemon to get his own levels up. So you could you could use them for the gym battle. There's going to be so many areas I'm going to show you that they set up for your Geodude to level up. It's so funny. We just never knew. Oh wait, I'm wrong. Is Magnitude not level 15? Now that's making me into a liar. Anyway, we're still able to proceed with Geodude at 15 just because he's strong enough, because he has that rock throw. So I'm going to show you the next area we're going to go to. There are so many places over here to get your experience for Geodude. The first place that we're going to stop is after we did that double battle, we go into the secret house here. And you're going to touch this little cup on the table. Guy's going to reveal himself and he's going to say, hey, yeah, you can play the, little, the games in the trick house. And then you touch the wall behind the scroll. And then you're going to come in this trick house here. And you are going to have to switch Pokemon around just a little bit in this trick house. Yeah, because see, um, Geodude doesn't have the best matchups. But it's still giving you some Geodude experience. So the main thing is you always want Geodude to be getting most of the experience right here until we get past Watson. And then you'll get a little bit more freedom. So the Taylor is about to evolve. So we get one more level on the Taylor. It's going to evolve into Swellow or whatever that thing is called. And that's going to be good, having a second ev evolution for that. Torchic, unfortunately, we're not putting in as much work on it. It's just kind of sitting there like the Torchic is actually more like the HM slave out of anything at, at this point. Which is funny because you would not possibly, more people use try to use their starters more than anything else. 
because there's no level restriction on gem badges for your starters. But in really, when you play the Pokemon game with the Pokemon they give you inside the game, you don't have to use your starter to get past any part. Of course, if you got Swampert in the beginning, it only makes sense to use Swampert <laughs> um, because it's just he was just OP for a lot of the gym battles. That water ground typing is very OP. So it just made absolute sense that you would have to use Swampert, especially even for the gym battle against Watson. If you chose to get the Swampert, you, did, you didn't have any problems at all with the gym. You should not because you can really just one shot everything in the gym if you pass Swampert and then you pick the soft sand. I showed you where to get the soft sand on the beach. If you had soft sand on your Swampert, you, you should not, you wouldn't have been one of those people that complained. The real problem was any person that did not pick Swampert um, in the beginning, you get to Watson and you're like, whoa, this is a big difficulty spike. Um, and a lot of the, the younger generation Pokemon games were like that. They had those, those difficulty spikes in there that seemingly popped out of nowhere. And just like I showed a video on the channel about fighting Whitney's Mill Tank, um, there's easier ways to get through Whitney's Mill Tank than we had realized also. Um, and I might make another video on that, just like this one. Um, maybe tomorrow or something like that. Or maybe maybe I'll, I'll release it on Monday where I'll show... Um, oh man, I'm just I'm spamming the wrong stuff here. But yeah, I'll probably make one for Whitney's Mill Tank too, so that way you can see uh, the easier way to get through Whitney's Mill Tank. And I'll, I'll play it from beginning to Whitney's Mill Tank, which that video probably won't be as long just because, you know, it, it really is only this, what is the second? Third gem. That's the third gem, just like Watson, actually. So a lot of third gems, they kind of... I guess are like a test to see if you really were uh, leveling up your stuff properly or whatever. I don't know what was the fascination with making third gems harder. Um, I'm trying to think in the original Pokemon, they had Brock, Misty, Lieutenant Surge. Lieutenant Surge really wasn't that hard. They actually gave you a very powerful uh, Diglett or you could have a Duck Trio to really just kind of wipe through Lieutenant Surge. Okay, so anyway, we got through that. Go ahead and cut. And so I was very wrong. I'm, I apologize. You got to get your G2 to 16 just to get the magnitude. However, now that we got the magnitude, everything else is very easy from here with Geodude. Even though things got much easier, you saw once we got the rock throw online, um, we were able to actually do damage because we got st it was a stab damage basically. And like I said, I'm trying not to use a lot of items, so if I can run back to the Pokemon Center at any moment and heal and restore PP, that's usually the main reason, too, is I need to restore some PP for attacks because I'm using the same Pokemon and same moves over and over again. So we're going to go on this left side here. You want to you scrounge up all the experience that you can get from this left side area. And... So this part, it feels a little grindy, but all you're doing is just fighting all the trainers in the area. Because, like I said, they give you so many places to prepare for what they're about to put in front of you. And so some of this, these trainers, they, they give you, they're throwing out Pokemon that you have already prepared for. Like you see, they know that you should have had a flying Pokemon as strong because you got through the first gym. So that's the reason why they give you grass Pokemon, just to see if you still kept that gra that flying Pokemon on your team. It's really like checks to make sure, are you keeping the strong Pokemon on your team? If not, maybe go back to your box so you can def defeat this Pokemon. But this is the perfect combination when you're doing double battles in the game. Um, at least in this portion of the game, you always want the Flyer and then Geodude. And that's why they actually have these setups with the double battles. They're hoping that you're using your Geodude because you need to level them up. And then you're keeping your flyer because you need to do ground type attacks like magnitude that affects everybody except flyers. It's really clever how they plan all this. It's really clever how they plan all this. Magnitude, it, it would never affect your flyer, but it's able to knock out 
all of the um, opponent's Pokemon very easily. Some of these berries you want to pick depending on what they are and you know what they do. So, um, yeah, that you might be able to equip some of those in battle too. So it's totally up to you if you know what the berries are that you see on the trees. Um, go ahead and snag some of those. They could be very useful as hold items. So right here, this is what I was talking about. So the magnitude, we'll just double team. We'll just sit back with the, the bird. We won't even do anything with Taylor. We'll just keep try to keep him safe from the pluses. This just lets you get your free your free ground type attacks on them. Yeah, so that's how those teams are meant to play out in these double battles here. They were hoping that you use your ground Pokemon that you're preparing for the third battle, which you wouldn't know if you weren't playing the game for the first time. You'd never know you were preparing for a third battle against Watson. So it's all funny. The stuff is there, but then you're not going to know that you need to prepare for it. So then, yeah, you got your Swallow. And like I said, that's really good. You know, you got two um two evolved pokemon so far and then geodude's gonna make your third magnitude has 30 pp that's amazing i'm just now realizing that and so this immobilization can be very annoying and magnitude finally does go off use orenberry Magnitude just go up again. Perfect. That is so annoying, boy. Those attract. I think Del Katie has one of the lower base stats in the game once you evolve it. Well, as an evolved Pokemon. Okay, so we are fighting some fish here. I can't remember if he's a Magikarp person or not. He is, so we'll absorb. And um, Bullet Seed would be good here if you had found the TM early in the game. I forgot to go get the, the bullet seat TM only because it's not absolutely needed. Let's see, this turns into Swift and that does knock out the Tentacruel. So we got the Lombre at 20 and we'll probably just give him the, the Leaf Stone at the point of the game where we pick it up. I think it's going to take just a little bit longer before we get to that Leaf Stone. And there we go. Lombre takes that, so he still gets some usage, even though he was the first gym um, fighter. Uh, um, I can't remember what's was back there. I think that's a dire hit, which we don't need. We don't really use those items. All right, so this is the second area that you're supposed to level Geodude up once you get your magnitude. Because all the Pokemon in this area are most... Most of the Pokemon in this area, the wild Pokemon... You can farm them for XP because they get one-shotted by magnitudes. And then, of course, they plan that on purpose. They plan, see, like this trainer, they plan that you be preparing your ground-type Pokemon. So they're going to give you ground-type Pokemon to make it easier for you to just get through these battles. So that's why when you see me fighting these battles here, they, they are easy. Because they technically made it so that it would be easy if you were using the Pokemon they wanted you to use. So this is like almost the perfect playthrough because I'm using the right Pokemon at all the right times type of thing. And um, of course you gotta switch here to your flyer because you're gonna always keep your flyer on your team. So this makes this matchup very easy. It still gives my Geodude some experience as well. Swallows uh, still at yeah 22 and you can switch to your Lombre here if you needed to But as you can see we don't need to because the damage is just so high already And we're gonna test out our quick attack with the silk scarf and it was a critical hit so um, beat the rival without Without even thinking <laughs> we just use one Pokemon to sweep the whole team um, So sorry about that may you just got in the way Oh, I like that rhyme. Anyway, go into another double battle and just pay attention to how they set up these matchups for the double battles. Very, very um, funny here. Once again, they give you a flyer, um, one that you have to use a flyer and a ground type against. So I don't really change my team at all. The flyer does his job. He puts in the ground, the, um, all the swallows paralyzed. That's unfortunate. Nuzleaf's going to get hit with a magnitude 10, so this should knock out everything. A magnitude 10, highest magnitude that you can get. 
What a lucky roll on that. Then you get Voltorb, and I'm just going to double team with the bird. Magnitude 8 is very hard hitting. All right, and Geodude's at 20 already. We got to get him to 25 so he can evolve into Graveler. I know I made some mistakes on certain things happening at certain levels already, but I should at least know 25 is is um, Graveler Zone just because, I mean, how long ago have we been playing Pokemon Red and Blue and stuff and I still can't get the stuff figured out? That's embarrassing. So this is where I'm gonna, where I was talking about earlier is you'll see all the wild Pokemon in this area. They are set up for you to keep um, grinding some experience off of them easily with a Geodude. I'm really not going to grind these wild Pokemon, but I will knock them out one by one if I run into them. Because I, I do want to save some PP for some other fights. There is a Pokemon Center coming up too, so we will be able to use that to um, make sure the Pokemon are healed. And their PP, mostly just restoring PP here. And so if I would have taught my Swallow the Thief attack, that would tear up the Abra. And I usually teach the bird Pokemon Thief. I just taught it to the um, other Pokemon just to, for the sake of doing it on this run through. But I usually just teach it to Swallow because that way it just keeps everything easy. I can keep Swallow in for so many things. It has such a high physical attack. Why not put a move that's not a stab on a high physical attacking Pokemon? It, to me, it just makes the most sense to do that. Uh, put the Thief, the Steel Wing on him. It gives him so much coverage for different types that he can get through. Oh, the Electrite survived that. I didn't even check and see what was the magnitude number on that one. So, yeah, like I say, those wild Pokemon will pop up. And then this Fisherman will like you to fight him. And you just want to take as much experience as you can because you're going to need it against against our guy here like i said um actually you don't even have to switch this out you can even get the fisherman with this one this matchup you can magnitude the heck out of this tentacle which i got a nine on him and then you can learn self-destruct we're not going to use self-destruct even though self-destruct is actually um pretty good move pretty good move to use we're not going to keep this in against the whelmer though just seems like it doesn't make too much sense and we're going to go ahead and absorb, make sure we get our health up. He's going to splash just to give me a free attack. I'll use nature power just to see. I think that is going to be a swift. And the Wilmer is going to faint. Um, I didn't know Wilmer actually has bad defense, even though it doesn't look like it would. We'll go ahead and swift this. And yeah, Wilmer has decent, decent stats. So this just does good damage here. I don't even know if I'm going to be using Thief on Lumber at all. There is a part in the game where it can come in handy, though, as long as my levels are high enough. So, um, we got that. So then, um, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in this town here. First thing, you're going to go ahead and get your, um, you're going to get your Pokemon healed up. So that way we can get to some more battles. We're going to go on a bicycle, get our bicycle. Go on that small little cycling road here. So, yeah. We're going to get our, our bicycle. Go on a small little bicycle road here because that actually has more free experience for your Geodude. And um, I'm going to get Mock Bike because it's just easier to use in my opinion. There are certain areas in the game that you can get to a little bit easier using the other bike. But um, X speed, okay. Can't remember what certain items or certain places. But yeah, this is going to be our Rock Smash. So in case you need to teach somebody the fighting type attack, um, we're going to make somebody a HM Slave in just a second. Um, but we got more battles here. Before we go into the battle, let's make sure we register our bike. Alright, bikes register. Now we're going to get into some more Devil Battles because we're... We're just grinding these these trainers out, grinding out these trainers so that way we can get our level 25. So here they put this zig, zigzagoon here because they just gave you rock smash, and they wanted to see if you were gonna teach it to a Pokemon immediately. I'm not in this case, which it is good to put it on a Geodude. Geodude would be a good Pokemon to have it on, but oh, I flinched. 
But um, you don't need it on Geodude. Especially to take out a Zigzagoon. Okay. So the Magnitude is going to hit hard enough with a critical hit that it still gets the Shroomish. And then the Zigzagoon finally gets gets hit for the first time. Um, so you're sending out two Pokemon at once, I thought. I'm just going to double team here. I thought he had two Pokemon left. Interesting. I find it interesting. Oh, the same person had two Pokemon left. I see. And we're just going to keep double teaming. Just as hope in hopes that he doesn't even hit the Swellow. Or if he does try to target the Swellow, the Swellow's kind of protecting himself a little bit. All right. And as you can see, all these battles are very, very easy. Um, definitely shouldn't struggle against any of the matchups in the story against these these Pokemon here and this is a potential double battle if you hit it right in the corner here and let both guys look at you at the same time but um looks like the other guy he just looked at me by himself quicker than the fisherman could and I'll, I'll keep in so this is if you taught somebody rock smash this is where you would rock smash the Wismer if you put it on your Geodude so they were really hoping that you put the rock smash on the Geodude right here um, and I, I just chose not to because I don't feel like it's it's not a need. If I use Rock Smash here, it's weaker than me using Magnitude. And see, so Magnitude would take out all these Pokemon, especially if we were in a doubles battle. So once again, I'm just proving that they did have things set up here so that your Geodude has actually an easy time getting through some stuff. I keep forgetting that's not where the Cycling Road is. Um... Oh yeah, the door is down here. This is what I was looking for. So now we're going to go through the cycling road and get our, our experience that we want. And there's only like three trainers, I think, on this road. But every piece of experience that you can get is pretty, pretty useful. So we're going to go ahead and take it. Everything can be magnitude, I believe, or rock throne. I think some can be rock throne here. We'll, we'll see. And this is a little test. Make sure you're ready for Watson because, yes, he's going to be using Magnemite. If you can't beat a Magnemite, then you won't be able to beat Watson. And it shows Sonic Boom there, which is made so that it can damage you something like a Geodude without worrying about strengths and weaknesses, all that stuff. So we get a Magnitude 7. That's good. All right. And then you get another Magnemite, which is just going to Magnitude. They did really well with giving Geodude 30 PP for that attack. Uh, I, I love the fact that they did that. I wish some other moves were more balanced as far as PP. Especially if you're just going to be leveling throughout the story. I mean, it doesn't matter. But I get for reasons where it gets to like competitive matches and stuff like that. Having too much PP on certain moves could... Could be an issue. Alright, and so... That person, you do not... You do not battle. Um, maybe that's the last trainer on the road. Okay, it's one more. That other person, I think you can just talk to him. I don't think you can battle him. And this is a level 6. I think he's still... He's not faster than Geodude here. Voltorb slash Electro. Definitely one of the fastest Pokemon in the game. But just not in this case, surprisingly. This this uh Geodude at level twenty three has got some some speed on him apparently. Um what we're gonna do is looks like we're gonna get the Geodude to level twenty five before we finish all the trainers in this area. And what that means is when we get him to twenty five, that's gonna be important for us to go ahead and start putting some of that experience share onto the Makahita. Because now we're going to get him ready to fight Norman later on in the game. So the experience share is going to remain on the Makahia for a long time at, after this point. Once we get to level 25. Because all we need is a Graveler. Just for damage and defense. Just more stats um, against Watson. Even though Watson may not touch us at all. We'll see. I can't remember how the speed plays out. Yeah. I can't remember. 
I can't remember, but um, Watson's Watson's whole team is fast, which that's what makes this team a problem too. Is like the fact that his whole team is fast. Um, trainer tips: the items in the bag can be reorganized by pressing select. Ah, I really didn't know that. And so if I wanted to, I could knock out all these Pokemon with one hits like you've seen before. But now I'm so over level them. I was like, what is the point? It's just taking up more time to get through the game to hit every, each one of these Pokemon. And they purposely make sure the Wingos are usually around level 12 in this area because a level 12 Wingo cannot use a water gun or it does not have water gun yet. So it still is a perfect training area for Geodude at this point. Because the Wingo does not have the water gun, you can just rock throw it for a one hit. Um, I walked into that building by accident. But yeah, here we go. We're going to go ahead and get in here and rest up. We're going to fight even more trainers. Even more trainers. So this is something that I recommend doing before getting to Watson. You're like, see, this is bad that you got to prepare for Watson this much it's not so much that it's just really the game put all these trainers here for you to explore and make sure you had enough experience like it is here for a reason is the whole point um so we're gonna go up here now and do this double battle which is good we're, so we're not gonna be too concerned in a few with getting the geodude up any higher and this is a situation where um, I could have my low tad and swallow in to handle this battle, but I'm just gonna go with the strength of my Geodude here. Just rely on magnitude since it had 30 PP, just spam it. I got the soft sand, it just makes me feel like I'm invincible. Soft sand Geodude at this level. Here's another double battle here, which you know you're going to get an electric person because of the the hair on the sprite. Oh, actually he's a fire breather type character, which we're going to get super effective attacks on these right here. And you see, once again, a lot of stuff already set up for you to not, not really struggle. Swallow's at 25, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. Swallow's at 25. So you're going to fight these people at this house. We've got four people to go through. They'll, they'll let you get through one. They're going to keep sending out someone from the house so that way you can fight them. And yeah, we get. You look at that. You just geodude them. It's going to put us on 25. And Zigzagoon. Um, just, we're just going to hit them with the magnitude because we're soft sand stab. And unfortunately, we get a magnitude 5, which is not good. It's, it's crazy how much difference the damage is. You usually want to get 7s. I don't see 6 pop up at all, but here we go. Geodude evolved because that was the end of that battle. And then you got a Graveler, which unfortunately you will be stuck with for the rest of the game because there is no trades on this um, unless you happen to have somebody that was going to be able to trade you. Um, it's, it's probably not that likely you're going to have somebody that can trade. <laughs> so you will be just stuck with a mid-level Graveler, but if you find the item called Eviolite, it at least will boost your Graveler's defense and special defense options there. And that's so annoying with the Grass-type Pokemon giving you status like Paralysis, just lowering the speed or poisoning you. It's like, why? Why do you choose to make my life harder? Okay, so now we got Meryl coming out, and of course we got to switch up because it's a bad matchup. Gives us a chance to get a Lombre, a little bit of experience here. And we'll go ahead and absorb. And honestly, I, I don't know, absorb is a very good utility. I mean, it doesn't do a lot of damage, but the utility on it just seems good enough that eh, you might want to keep it. All right, then you got Shroomish. I just realized I still didn't. I never got the Water Gun. I wonder what happened. I was supposed to have Water Gun by now. I must have missed something here with my Lombre. Did he? 
Did he get KO'd during the middle of a fight or something after he leveled up? I'm trying to remember. Because I thought his water gun was like level 13 or something. Either way, it's not as um, it's not detrimental to our gameplay here. We are going to get a, a water Pokemon in just a few that we're going to need to fight the fourth gym. And you do have enough time to really get it leveled up um, at, at the last minute. Which is one of the rare, more rare instances in the game where you can prepare that Pokemon um, a little bit easier. Even though you just caught it. So that's why I don't care too much for... Um, Forcing myself to get a is weird. Okay, so I don't force myself to get a water Pokemon early in the game, which you could get the Wingo early in the game, and you could use it to fight the first gym, and you could also use it to get through the fourth gym. Very good utility they put on a lot of these Pokemon, and of course, it's actually landing high jump kicks. What what would be the odds that it's really landing high jump kicks on us? high odds apparently so this is um an interesting method of trolling here yeah it's basically trying to show me out here by making something happen that normally would not happen here that's funny so i could have used a revive there but i'm if they're gonna cheat that bad i'm not going to revive to um i'm not gonna play be try hard with them if they want to cheat that bad. So basically you just got to go through the whole series of each each battle again. Which it should go a lot smoother because obviously we got higher levels. Meaning our stats are higher. We're going to do more damage. Be able to take more attacks that we shouldn't have had to take. High jump kick has never been that accurate before. Ever in my life have I seen that. Um, very interesting how they did that to me. And then we just hope that we don't get paralysis on this one. Let's see if they're going to change up the odds or change up the type of move they're going to do. They're supposed to go for a grass attack because it's super effective. And then it would be not very effective. That's good. That's what you were supposed to do the first time. Now we get you with the wing attack. Uh, I want some chicken wings, man. But anyway move on to the third trainer now and then here we go so we got the Merrill um, I'll just go ahead and put in the swallow honestly we got the water gun it's not gonna do much good and then they're gonna give us the shroomish so that way I just try to prepare so I don't have to keep switching so much to meet the matchup types yeah we'll just go with that for right now just give a swallow a lot of um, extra xp here all right and then we got the metatite so we'll see what he's gonna do with this this high jump kick here detect okay good there you go make dumb moves like you normally do like why are you playing smart Okay, and then that's that's it right here. We're not gonna do anything else there. Um, I think there's an item over here. Let me check. Okay, I couldn't remember. I thought there was an item there. It could be, but um. So next you're gonna fight Wally. He only has one Pokemon, which is a Ralts. Ralts has abysmal defense and HP. So whatever you hit it with, it will just fold. And it's just a moment in the story for him to see, look, man, you got a long ways to go if you want to be a Pokemon trainer. Just because you leveled up one Pokemon a little bit does not mean that you can take on gems. It, it takes a little bit more than that. So now I humble Wally, show him, hey, man, um, you got to get tougher. You got to battle. You got to catch Pokemon. There's more things you're going to need to do. All right. So they're just telling me, hey, visit Wally in the town one day. And then this guy, Mysterious Man, pops up again. So while we are here at this point, we do want to go ahead and get, get put on that XP share that we got earlier. Up to this point, I would say you probably didn't want to use it because you want to make sure your Geodude got all the experience it needed to be successful in life. And now you're sure that it will be able to 
take on the gym leader without any issues. So what we're going to do here is put the XB share on the Makahita because now we, we're pretty much ready for Makahita to start building up a few levels here. All right, so you got daycare center up there. Right now, since we did not catch any extra Pokemon, there's nothing to put in the daycare center. But I would say if you did catch some extra Pokemon that are outside of these Pokemon that you need to keep on your team for now, you could put them in a Pokemon Center. Um, but just not these important Pokemon, obviously, because you want to keep these Pokemon on your team. Arm Thrust. Yeah, this is actually a good move. Um, I would get Sand Attack out of here because maybe going to be one of the least useful ones. All right, so people keep giving me phone numbers, even though we're never going to come back and fight them. All right, so then we're going to magnitude the Wismer. We got a Aaron here. Yeah, magnitude that. Okay. Then you got Makahita. This is a bad matchup, but you're really high leveled at this point, so it shouldn't be at you. You want to squeeze out as much experience as you can with the gravel. I think level 30 is the max level you can get to, so you want to halt before you even get to 30. Because while you're fighting through the gym, you're probably going to get to 30 either way. So 28 is a safe... Oops, I pressed the wrong button, just not thinking. Um, 28 is a safe level in my opinion. And to be honest, Makahita can even do some fighting. If you put your, if you had got your Makahita to evolve to Hariyama before you get to the gym battle here, um, it actually can be useful too for the gym battle. Believe it or not, um, just it's definitely not optimal to use the Hariyama, your which would be your evolved Makahita. I think that comes at level 24, 20 something like that it comes mid 20 so that way you're capable of doing that if you wanted to because of the fighting type attacks against steel it would help you against the magnemites um anyway grabler doing his thing like i said soft sand is um soft sand is something else and a vital throw is actually what you're going to use to defeat the 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 gym leader that is normal type later in the game is your father, Norman. Okay. Try to get the double battle light there, but didn't really get the right spot at the right time. It's okay. Gravel will do his thing. Hit the rock throw. Perfect. And then Norman gets his experience. And she would like to battle me someday. Oh yeah, this person doesn't fight. I just remember that. But these two do. Sometimes I go and get the other devil battle if you get the other two people. But shouldn't matter here based on the matchup we have in our our main slot here. So yeah, we could rock and you could actually fly in here. A few different paths you can take to make this a super effective battle. Norman gets to level 14, so we're getting that Makahita up there. And Maka, he was going to really get um, levels by the time we get to that fourth gym. We should have fought enough trainers. Well, Maka, he is going to be in a really good space. Really good space. All right, we got Ralts. Oops, I used Tackle, and it's still just decimated Ralts. Like I say, Ralts, abysmal defensive stats. It's the first level, um, you know, first evolution. So not really supposed to have good stats. Especially when it evolves two other times. We wouldn't expect that anyway. Alright, so we're just fighting through these last round of trainers. This area here is the last little bit of experience that you could soak up before going to the boss. I mean, the gym battle. And as you can see, we've since we leveled up very optimal in this area, we've already had more than enough to get Grappler where he needs to be. But they give you plenty of opportunities. That's the funny thing about it. Like I was saying, they give you plenty of opportunities to be prepared for Watson. It's just funny how we didn't know at the time when we were growing up. Maybe some people did figure it out. 
But I just doubt it. Like, there's no way you could figure this out on your first playthrough that the game was set up like this. So that way, technically, it's, it's mostly easy. And we like to say some of the older Pokemon games are hard. They were more difficult because there were less mechanics and features, for sure. Just like the first Pokemon and not having certain types to be able to deal with psychics was crazy. And eventually it gets sorted out where Psychic now is not really that powerful at all, really. It's just you've, you've got Dark and Ghost and then all this other stuff. And now Fairy's even getting a little bit of a nerf with, uh, you know, finally getting like a, you know, getting Steel types and stuff that can beat it. And Poison actually having another type it could be strong against was really nice. This Poison, I mean, really didn't have no any winning matchups like that. Obviously, you know, it does have at least one, but that's not good. <laughs> at least have two to three winning matchups so that you're even usable. All right, so we switch in our Swallow. And they stun Spores. Okay. Of course, it's always when I put the Swallow in. This is the reason why I like to teach Swallow Facade during the mid game. Because it's like, oh well, I've got Silk Scarf, you want to keep paraly paralyzing me. I'm going to go ahead and start facading you for um, doing this. Alright, cool. So, we're here in town. And this is where Wally stays, they were talking about. Hey, go see Wally when you're in. It's getting used to liking you. Okay. Now, honestly, there is somewhere around here. I cannot remember. You can get a Macho Brace, too. I wish I could find, remember where I get the Macho Brace from. That would be nice. Um... I'm not going to look it up while I'm playing, to be honest. But I would love to find a Macho Brace. I believe it's, it's available somewhere around here. And the Macho Brace is going to make Makuhita, obviously, devastating in the uh, battle against Norman. But if you run the bulk ups, you don't need it. However, in most cases, you want to make yourself prepared as much as possible before going into these battles and like I said since you wouldn't know what to do beforehand with these battles um, it's hard to optimize for them but uh, what you can see we got going on here we got a graveler level 27 heading into the gym and your plan is to just magnitude through all of the gym leaders Pokemon and it does work just fine so now we're finally here so you can see um, how easy Watson is to beat and as you saw through this this playthrough there wasn't a lot of grinding except we did have to get grabbers levels up to where we learned magnitude so that's the only bit of grinding that you do have to do in order to get to this point which most people wouldn't have known to do that as they're playing through the game or you probably just wouldn't have done that because who would prioritize a graveler a geodude during their playthrough Normally, I don't see a lot of players norm just randomly doing that. But now, um, this may give you a different perspective when you play other Pokemon games in the future. Or if you go back and play some older games, you may start to realize other situations that are pretty much just like this as well. When they did set you up for success, but we really just didn't know at the time. Alright, and so here we go. We're... Just gonna keep our graveler in a magnitude through this and they unfortunately reduce their stuff we're gonna tackle not even rock throw because rock throw does not have 100 percent accuracy so we want to be watch out for that and a gulpin which is a poison is easily going to get destroyed by ground type they're just checking to see if i still have one um okay so we do want to fight this crew just to get as much experience as possible also, since we know the fight will be easy, there's no point in skipping some trainer battles because they're the bulk of your experience that you're going to get through the game. Yes, you can grind through stuff, but um, the game ultimately feels better when you play 
play it the way they design it where you don't have to grind if you do certain things so if I'm going to be playing it this way then I'm going to purposely try not to grind because that's technically how they set it up is if you do do it the way they wanted you to you can just kind of run straight through the game but it's just a low chance that you would even fake out do I really want to learn to fake out I got tackle I don't know see this is good fake out is good for double battles I'm not gonna lie fake out is good for double battles uh, so it's just I don't know which Pokemon I'm planning to use for double battles later on in the game even throughout the story because Makahita does come in handy in some double battles later so anyway we got there now you're at the big boy you're at Watson there's not much to say here you've heard the plan for so long now all you're gonna do is see this in action so get ready I'm going to show you how to beat Watson this is it so he starts off with his vault orb you you click magnitude obviously it's just gonna hit and then he's got electric he's see you he's not doing any damage to you and you're gonna click magnitude so he's gonna put out his Pokemon magneton now sonic booms only thing that can really damage you but they're not gonna survive long enough to do any damage so now gravel becomes level 28 and your Norman is level 20. Now he's got his big boy Manetric in here. And Manetric hits hit by a magnitude 8, which of course you're not supposed to survive that. And then that's the leader Watson. And all you had to do was just level up your Geodude. You get the Geodude right after the second gem. And you basically work on the Geodude up until you get to the third gem. And that's actually how you beat Watson. Um, very interesting thing there. But... Um, Hopefully you learned a lot from that. If you're still watching because this is a live stream video, I'm, I'm going to take a small break to use the bathroom. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to keep playing through the game. So you're welcome to continue watching from here because you will see how I prepare and beat some of the other gems in the game also. So I'll be right back. Just going to use the bathroom.
right, we are back. So we took out Watson with actually, if you watched all the other gym fights up to now, he actually looked like the easiest gym to beat <laughs> out of all the gym leaders we have fought. Um, the first gym leader we actually lost to on the first match. Second gym leader we got a, um, a lucky crit that helped us get through that first battle right at the end. So now, what we're going to do, we need a water Pokemon. And yes, this is water. But um, we're not going to use this one. We're going to have a little bit of fun here. Um, we'll put the Lombre out here, though. We'll let the Lombre um, get some shine. Um, the Norman is getting leveled up here. But we're going to wait until the Norman evolves. So the only Pokemon that has not evolved yet is our Torchic and our Norman. I feel sorry for our Torchic right now. I'm going to teach Rock Smash to a Pokemon, and it's going to be Torchic. <laughs> oh gosh, I'm sorry, Torchic. Yeah, so um, this is a rare case where you're going to see the starter Pokemon technically become one of the HM slaves. Um, and plus, we want a good Surf Pokemon on our team, so we're going to pick a good Pokemon to have Surf in a few. That's what we're about to work on now. We're actually going to uh, skip past those trainers for a second. Um, we're going to get the Pokemon that we want to level up for the fourth gym battle. Nature Power. Swift. And of course, Grass Pokemon are just annoying. It's like they're not good, they're just annoying. Yeah, it's just annoying. Shouldn't have used that swift there. <sighs> Meryl. And that that's actually the Pokemon we're about to catch. We're gonna get a Meryl evolving into Azamorel. And that's gonna just provide a good extra dimension to our team. So that's why I'm deciding to do that over the Lombre. Just because Lombre is going to be good as far as doing water damage. But Meryl is going to have a little bit more variety to their moveset. Because they can learn Rollout. Which is also going to be um, super effective against some fire types as well. Versus Lombre doesn't have all the best tools to fight fire Pokemon. Other than, yes, of course, water type attacks. But to have two different types of moves you can use is going to be better. And plus, we're so we're doing very well with our levels right now that we can add another um, Pokemon to the team. We're only sitting at four. Four usable Pokemon, <laughs> I'll say that. So um, let's go ahead and catch the Meryl here, and then we'll swap. We'll heal up the Meryl, swap it in for something else. Um, we'll go ahead and nature power this just to see what this does. It's Stun Spore in this area. I figured it changed in this area. We'll hit with the Thief. I guess that's decent attack for a non-stab attack too. We're only five levels above that. So here is where you catch the Meryl. You could have caught this in the first area of the game. 
and then you could have just kept it with you so you could level up here where I could have focused my experience share so there's different options obviously I could have been focusing my experience share on the Meryl that I caught in the beginning of the game if I would have chose to catch one and then that way my Meryl is more ready to go by this time it would have been in the level 20s at least but I chose to do it the way that you saw it in the video and right now just because I'm trying to catch specifically a Meryl that's the reason it's not giving it to me here just like when I was going for the Geodude I like that this one is a 16 Meryl has good defense too so I'm, I'm good as far as I know we're not going to knock this out I'm just going to knock out my Lombre possibly but let's hit the Great Ball just to make sure maybe, maybe we don't get KO'd and we don't. Good. They give us good catch rates on that. Thank you. They don't completely hate us. And now we got our, our Meryl here. And this is Isaac. Somebody that just wants to call and fight. Um, no, thank you, sir. I'm, I'm on the journey right now to be the best that ever was. So, um, yeah, special attack and attack kind of evened out. So you could do either or. So, yeah, it comes with water gun and rollout already. So that's what's um, very important about that. We're going to take the experience share off of Norman for right now because we don't want to share experience when we're trying to um, focus on this this creature. But we'll go ahead and put the quick, quick, quick claw on him. And then we're going to come back and fight that little camera crew too. Uh, actually, that's how much I wanted to save the experience for them. I could have avoided those other trainers too, but I chose not to. And this is where it starts getting tricky when you start adding so many different Pokemon in your team. If you do not remember all the double battles in the game, which I definitely don't, uh, now you just have to kind of guess which uh, setup you would like to go with in the beginning. So now I'm just going to go with Flying and Meryl because Swallow just seems to fit really well in a lot of double battles. So we're going to let Swallow stay up in this top spot there secondary support and yeah here we go let's fight the camera crew i forget what pokemon they have maybe i will keep it in my brain after doing this fight they got a magnemite whisper so i need i actually needed the ground type oh boy um we're gonna take out i'm just gonna do this double team just to be annoying in case they target Ooh, he targeted the Graveler. Perfect. And I'm just going to double keep double teaming with Swallow. Oh, magnitude 9. Nothing else to be said here. That's a straight knockout for both. Yeah. And the camera crew is always usually, they're usually easy to take out. And no, I'm not going to do any interview this time. Yeah, I got to keep moving. I'm sorry. Um, Here we go. Another trainer. And this is a Nuzleaf. I don't have the perfect tools to take out a Nuzleaf with that. So we'll go in and get the switch. It hardens, which don't make a difference with the type of attack stat I have here. Plus it's a stab, super effective damage. Alright, get another trainer. Pretty soon we're going to start getting some good matchups for Meryl. So we won't worry about switching too much. So good matchup because you got rollout two rollouts and that's all it's going to take I'm going to keep rolling out because I already started it and looks like it did enough damage along with a critical hit if it didn't have the critical hit I don't think I would have knocked out right there and so now we got some of the rock the rock fighting people here the hikers so this is like easy experience for Meryl so like I said the game sets it up for you to level up the right Pokemon at the right time. They know that you're going to need a water type Pokemon next. So they're giving you stuff that Meryl can, can knock out easily. And it gives you the Meryl right in the same area. It's just only if we would have noticed. Or some people probably did when they were playing. It's just funny to me that I didn't notice. And look, the Meryl's evolving just that quickly we just caught it so you didn't really have to ever you didn't have to put in work with the Meryl the entire game because as you saw the first three gems where where did you really have time to use the Meryl for it to be very efficient um there wasn't a lot of spaces in there um 
so it just works out so perfect it goes so smooth once you realize these things about the game granted does it make the game kind of linear if you figure this out yes but there are still some nuances where things change around sometimes when you play the game except of course you know which trainers you're going to fight and you know which areas you should be using and catching certain things yes i get it but every playthrough is not 100% the same, and we know that. Alright, so we're going to have to go through this cave. We don't have strength yet, but we're going to be getting strength. And then, okay, so it looks like we're going to need ground. Let's just get Graveler in here just in case. And then we, we'll actually swap in a Swallow if needed. If we feel like we're going to have to pop a Magnitude, which we usually will, then we'll swap in the bird. Actually, I could have kept the last matchup that I had. But, hmm. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do this. So, yeah, that ground flying um, combo cannot be beat, man. Look at it. Each battle here, ground flying would have just um, did its thing in, like, one turn. Okay. So... Honestly, I'll just double team with the bird. It's not like I need to do anything specific. We'll let Graveler do his thing. <laughs> you see why the Graveler is so important now? Like, it's just making the game so much easier. And even, even when I show you how it's almost required that you get the Graveler to make life easier, it's like, why would you not play with the Graveler every time you play the game? Unless you went for the water type starter where you don't need the grappler to do these ground type things. But magnitude hits both um, opponents in a tag battle. So that's something important to remember also that um, Swampert's ground attacks do not do. So for double battles, you still want this um, over anything else. Uh, Electrike. So this will be a perfect swap here no matter what he's going to do. Because if he Thunder Wave, that would have been bad. If he tackled, it wouldn't have done any damage, but it could have paralyzed, and that's not that bad. And so now they want you to be playing Swap or Rooney with all these Pokemon here, just to test to see what you kept on your team. And when you swap these Pokemon, they're such good tag ins that you you don't really feel like you're taking a risk of getting a really bad hit done on you, like a super effective attack. The matchup swaps are so good once you know um, which Pokemon you're supposed to have on your team. It doesn't matter as much. Swift. Critical hit on the Swift. That's that's cool. He uses Super Potion. Alright, so then the Swift. Um, we'll go ahead and just take this. Drain. Vital Throw. Now we could have swapped into our Flying Attack. But it looks like we're being a little stubborn here. So Lombre took some damage. And didn't have to. But this uh, next place that we're coming up to. We will be able to get our, our PP. So this is going to give me TM43. Which is secret power. So if you remember on the beach. They said that if you get secret power. You could bring it to them. Um, that's totally up to you if you want to do that. Sometimes I... I prefer teaching this to Meryl too, just to give it better options for handling certain things. Uh, I'll see if I do that this time. I'm gonna, I'll try to go through it without teaching it secret power for now until, unless I see I'm really getting some bad matchups. But yeah, I think she always gives you a raspberry in that spot. And then from here, we're just gonna keep Azumarill in this spot. Yeah, and you see why. That's the rollout, in case you kept Asmoril in his spot. Um, now this is a grass type attack, and we're locked into a rollout. So that's an interesting situation they put you in right there. But good good, good thing, Asmoril's attack is very high. So if you rely on that attack stat, you should do really well. And so all these people keep giving me the phone numbers. So let's... Let's double check Azumarill's um, attack stat here. It has the ability, huge power usually. Yeah, which raises the attack. So attack says 31, 
but it's more like it does 60 just like the graveler um, we're not doing any stab because we don't have the mystic water which we are going to get that before heading to a specific gym here we could teach um, so we could have taught the rock smash to the azumarill if we wanted to but as you know we made our starter the hm slave so the spinna the spinda is not going to get any love right now this is really a test to see hey you have anything that can take out normal types because you're going to be fighting a normal type like this in a few once you get past your your next gym battle that's kind of what that is just a little check there like you got anything for this um water gun here critical hit super effective so yeah, that's going to be feeling like almost like four times the damage with the stab added in. Um, go ahead and get a potion here just because we're going to fight two battles back to back. And we're doing water. You know, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I'll just I'll just keep it like this for now. I was trying to think of trying to play pre plan acting as if I knew what would have been a good idea here. And I don't. I don't know. So this fight here um, would be good if you actually caught the... I think the Spenda has Psybeam or something like that. So if you would have caught it, you could Psybeam the, the Graveler and the Ball Toy here. Um, Rock Throw just keeps missing. I Granted, I think he's smoke screen me. I didn't pay attention. So we got Sandshrew. And then this self-destructs. How annoying. I'm just going to suicide like that. And Graveler. Graveler's about to learn his own rollout. And I'll just go ahead and put this on defense curl because... Why not? Give me two different rock choices to choose from. Swallow. And then Jazz, which is going to get destroyed by that. We'll put Tackle. Because you're not even going to get a chance to attack. Alright. And we got Ninja Boy down. And then there's going to be one other person waiting. Looks like we're going to have to fight them using the Graveler. Maybe they have a Fire type. They have something that can get destroyed by ground. So it's same same idea here. Perfect. I figured that was the case. And then they got another Aeron. So just a little check to make sure you got your fighting type ready. Or you do your ground type. And we, we do have both ready because, let's see, what does the Norman have so far? Um, 31 attack so far. And he still has to evolve. So once he evolves, uh, yeah, he's going to be good. Let's see. Fake out, vital throw, bulk up. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and revive the Azumarill. Actually, I didn't know if I had to, but I think I am going to miss a little bit of experience with the Ozma rule if I don't do that. And I'm getting slightly anxious where I do want to put the experience share back on the Makahita now that I realize it's not evolved yet. Um, I'm feeling like I want to get it evolved very soon now. Alright, uproar, faint attack is just making me stay in here. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and super potion. They're really pressure. See, they're really pressuring my Ozma Rail too, so that's why I feel like I need to get some more levels on it before I just toss in it, um, toss on the experience share. Because even though it's evolved, it's somehow it seems like it's still struggling just a little bit, even with the high damage. So we got Numel, which shouldn't struggle at all. Put that water guy on him. And that's it for Parasol Lady. She didn't have anything else. Alright, and then put that in a Poke Nav. Let's get these twins. And I like how they do have a gym leader as twins in the game too. And we'll just, uh, I think these are their only Pokemon. So we're just going to roll with it as is for this. We'll take that. Water Gun. Good. The rock throw misses, of course it does. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. All right. And they're giving me too many wild fights here. Max Ether, put it in the pocket. Slugma. I feel like I just won't get enough experience from knocking out the wild Pokemon. So like I said, with this uh, this strategy and stuff, you don't really have to put in a lot of wild Pokemon grinding sessions. We'll go in here to get the soup sack. So in case you want to trade it in, trade in your volcanic ash anytime in the game, you'll be able to come back and do that if you want to. You know, play around in this area. I forget what type of items you got you get out of there when you trade in this stuff from the soup sack I think it might be something really cool though I don't think they would have put it in a game if it wasn't something cool I forget though all right so water gun yeah not gonna be that powerful because it's not a physical attack and Osmo Rails does specialize in a lot of physical attacks uh, let's just trade out into Geodude since they're doing all this self-destruct stuff yeah see smart move there like come on dude like what's wrong with you route throw poison gas you poisoned them these little coughings are so annoying they're not good they're just annoying so I think I can use Pokemon up to level 50 after that last gym badge I can't remember this should be the last trainer. No, there's actually another set of trainers. This is actually pretty tough here. They got us fighting a lot of stuff before we can move on. Metal Claw. Not very effective. I was worried that I made a mistake by going for attack here. 23. Alright. We're not going to settle down yet into the... We're going to need to buy more potions, but... I'll, I'll be ready in just a second to um, put that experience share back on the Makahita. At least so I just get it evolved. So I, I feel um, happy about it. Um, I can't remember what I usually use in this matchup here. But we'll focus on the Skarmory. Even though the rollout on the Graveler, he can get knocked out very easy by Osmoril, but the thing is he was already going to get knocked out regardless. And so we'll go ahead and put our own Swallow in. And we'll roll out on him. And yeah. Osmoril is very fast. He went before the Swallow. I didn't know he was that fast. That's crazy. Swallow's really fast. It's a frail fast Pokemon. And rollout does good damage. And so we just quick attack before Osmoril gets a rollout because I'm not going to be able to wing attack it, obviously. So that's cool. We made it into the next town. We don't even need to talk to a lady in a box. Like, I'm missing a few little items here and there that you could be picking up. Um. As you can see, it may not really be that required to get through it. Um, great balls, we'll get close to 10 on those. Super potions, we use a few of those. Antidotes, we have zero. So we want to make sure because we know how annoying the poisons and stuff are. Escape rope, I still have some. Super repel, don't have that many, but I haven't been repelling lately. And um, yeah, so once we, we do our little talking here. Because I forget certain stuff about who to talk to in certain towns. So sometimes I do talk to more people than needed. And that's alright. I remember this house. We do need to talk to this guy. He tells you about heart scales for later in the game. And then this guy's... Gives you the TM dig. So you can handle fire Pokemon. So, if we wanted to, this is a good, <sighs> trying to think here, who could I teach Dig to, let's, let's take a look, to 
Let's see, I figured the Makahita might be able to take the dig as well. I'm trying to think of other situations I would need dig because I want to put it on Azumarill. I guess it could be useful for double battles, yes. I don't want to waste it, but let's, we're going to try something a little different. I never put it on Azumarill, but since it has high physical attack, I think it'll be good. It'll work well for double battles as well. We still have two defensive attacks that are very useless, so we'll go ahead and roll with that. I'm not going to teach it secret power this time. So that's what I mean when sometimes you can just try different stuff just to see. Or sometimes you know that certain things just aren't good good ideas so this is where I would usually secret power with the Azumarill is like fighting these fights here like the bar boats so I don't have to switch out but I'm choosing not to use the secret power right now I, wanna, I just want to take a different path when it comes to just that one TM that one move and see um, what difference does it make and this is a roar I'm not gonna take a move spot up with roar though that's going to seem like a waste for me. So that looks like a fisherman, so we'll put the lombre up here. I'm ready to get the leaf stone, though, so I can make the lombre even more useful. So here. So I'll, I'll go ahead and dig right here, just so we can get him out the Nuzleaf, out of the Nuzleaf's way. And that way, they got to focus on the long bread, which is not a good tight matchup for either of these two. Awesome real level 24, Bubble Beam. Ooh, that's going to hit hard. I'll just go ahead and put that in the Tail Whip spot, just because. I mean, nothing really there right now. Not very effective. Nature Power. So Nuzleaf hits both with that. Okay. That's good to know that Nuzleaf, I mean, that Nature Power does hit two. So I'm going to keep that in mind now, that the Swift is going to hit both. I think I knew that from another um, Pokemon game, actually. Okay, that's interesting. We'll just do D for right now. Yeah, because I figured we had the speed advantage over both of the, over, over him. But is the long break faster like that? That's crazy. Let me, let me check these speeds. Lombre, what are you at? That's a 28, 26. Oh, jeez, that's an 81. What was that? Oh, the Quick Claw made me go first when I was with the Swallow. Because I was about to say, I was about to say, I knew, I knew, um, Azumarill was not that fast. Okay. I think since my Azumarill is at 24, I can safely put the experience share back on just to prepare for the 5th gym. Uh, I always want to be prepared. So, yeah, we're going to go ahead and put the experience share back on. And we got a barboat. Cool. Hombre. Fishing. All right, cool. So, Norman, we're gonna get you your experience share back just at least until you can get your your evolution. I don't know when what we're gonna do with the Torchic. Torchic's very unlevel, and I don't see a reason to to put a lot of my. I don't see a lot of reason to put in a lot of my my time on getting that experience level up not not through trainer battles for sure you swift on me astonish and I'll just go ahead and switch so the swallow is almost at level 32 which is good 
I love the high speeds, that 81. I didn't know the quick claw, though, was getting me to go past the swallow. That was crazy in those um, that double battle. Got us a revive there. All right. And then we get a doubles battles coming up. Let's see, they're giving you a Lombre here because if you hadn't gotten your water Pokemon ready by now, you could get a Lombre that should have water gun. I don't know what happened to my water gun. And of course, they're going to paralyze me. Or paralyze me. I know that's the right word. I always say paralyze just because. I know the correct wording. Alright, so we could bubble beam here. Um, not a good matchup though to keep the the Azumarill in, but it's all it's whatever. They've chose the wrong move by doing growth. And I still got to tag through paralysis. So Norman's getting some experience now. Um, we'll go ahead and dig. See if we can get him out of the way. But Resilia might swing before then guess it depends on my quick claw and how well it's working i forget and these older version of the games it doesn't really tell you when click quick claw activates before the attack it just does um so that's a little bit different so i don't know if i want lombre asmaril in a slot because they kind of specialize in similar typing matchups uh, and that may not be the best thing for us so go ahead and hit a bubble beam on this which should do decent damage. And then Norman goes to level 22, learn Whirlwind. Um, I think this actually could be cool for double battles. These are all good double battle moves. Keep control of the field. Um, Nuzleaf, unfortunately, I'm going to have to get the switch. And then Growth. Damn, go ahead and hit the wing attack. All right, puts the Swallow. Swallow's trying to learn Endeavor. I just forget what Endeavor does, but I like having double team. So we're gonna keep our, our move set there. And then they give you a Swap Blue, which I honestly should catch that Swap Blue. <laughs> Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, there's there's a gym leader that uh maybe catching that swab blue is a good idea i, I, I think i'm gonna catch it if, if i see another one i think that's a good idea to be honest yeah go ahead and give me an opportunity i think this could be very useful if i, I decide to level this thing up I'm going to show you why later. All we need to do is just have good stats. I'm trying to think what level do we need to have this thing on. We'll, we'll know by the time we get there. But ooh, we're going to have to really be prepared. Okay. Well, anyway. Alright, let's check. Um, Swab Blue. Can you learn Shockwave? No. Okay. You learn rock tune, can't you? So Swablu's in the box. It would mean I would have to get rid of something important too. Which eventually I am going to have to get rid of something important for what I want to show you later on. So Swablu may not have enough room. So I'm looking at this Pokeball here. It feels like I could pick it up. Um, this is cut and rock smash. We got to keep that. We're getting ready to evolve the Makahita though. So once the Makahita is evolved, we're going to kind of just keep our hands clean with it for right now until we get to the next gem. I mean, until we get through the fire gem, because the fire gem is the next gem that we're making our way to. Um, that's the reason why we're training the Azumarill ahead of time is because we're getting ready for the fire gym. Is this electric person? That's a flame breather. Perfect. And then we're going to be coming up on the black glasses that enhances our dark type attacks. So that's going to be used for the seventh gym. But you have to, you know, get it now. 
which you would have to know that, or sometimes you don't have to know it, but it's just good to know it if you're going through the game. If you understand, oh, I'm going to need these later, and I, need, I know where to get them. Okay, we got another double battle, a hiker and somebody else, picnicker. So this should be easy. Yeah, very easy. We can water gun. I'm not even going to bubble beam that thing. Level 23. And I think that should be be it for Norman, right? Is it 23 or 24? Okay. I guess I'm not sure anymore about anything. It might be 24. Is it 25? It got me questioning everything. Go ahead and bubble beam, get a little extra damage. Machop's got a little bit of health on him. It's not really his defense stats, but he does have some health on him. Okay. Then they come through here, go straight up, get a full heal. And then we're going to get to the story activation portion here. Yep, he he he. Mount Chimney, they're talking, then Team Aqua comes up and then they're talking about the meteor right and so that means they're going to be going to the area near the cave where we're going to be going team magna we were out of hurry and then it tells us basically we're heading back to mount chimney yes sir they took me all right and then um yeah you get your moonstone which i forget what we're going to use to evolve that i don't usually use the moonstone to evolve anything, I don't catch the Zubat. It did give you a chance to catch the Rock Psychic Pokemon in here. Um, I haven't really found a good use for it, even though sometimes it does do well in, in battle, certain matchups. Having the Rock type, I believe, is very strong in this game because you just knock out so many flyers. But um, other than that, I don't really see the strength behind it. Psychic is just okay, but we'll, we'll see. I'm, I'm just going to leave that out for right now. Don't feel like I need that, that Pokemon at all. And I, I am a little sad. It doesn't seem like the dig is going to be as useful as I thought it could have been. Yeah, it doesn't look like it will be. I'm going to bust in here and get an item. And that's just a great ball. Uh, we got berries here. Bluck berries. I guess it's supposed to be like black. And because this little scientist person trying to be smart, they're looking for it because they think I'm going to try to sneak past them. And I really wanted to fight them. But they, um, they wanted to turn the other way. Why did I press dig? I got to remember dig is my tag team move. And then you got Spoink, which has good special defense stats, I believe. So it's, it's really good at, at blocking some of his types unless you're hitting with a physical ghost. And there are good physical ghost moves, so yeah, Spoink. Alright, we're going to Bubble Beam. This doesn't have a lot of um, HP or defense, really. So... Good. and we're Norman just going up okay speed fell looking for the paralysis not not gonna get it Norman's 24 um yeah okay well I was right about that it is 24 not 25 all right we got the Hariyama good if only I could remember where I get that Macho Brace. I feel like I should have had it by now. So that's that's unfortunate that I'm not remembering. And so 
Just get this extra trainer battle by going up here to get the meta type fighter. Bubble beam. Meta type still alive somehow. What a guy. There's their Makahia. Oops, I press rollout. And they got Warm Thrust. Ooh, and they Vital Throw Me. Bubble Beam. Good. Alright, cool. And so I haven't trained enough. In return, she wants to battle me later. Do you think I'm coming all the way back over to this beach? DP up. Very helpful. Could be. So now we're back at the first gem leader city. We're going to go through the cave. We're going to rock smash through. And then we're going to get our next HM, which it will be strength. So you had to come through this way to get strength. Or you could have went back another way, actually, but this is where you get strength. We'll get potions just in case. Pokeballs definitely don't need them. We're not really catching stuff like that. Um, repels. We didn't end up using the ones we bought last time. Let's see, did I ever miss anything in this house? I feel like there's a place where I missed, uh... That's where you trade the CDOT, the routes. I'm just wondering, why, where did I miss that Macho Brace? Because that's going to make a big difference in knocking out all of, um... Norma's Pokemon without relying on the bulk up so heavily. I may have to go... I want to see if I can get at least three bulk ups, just based on... You know, trying to guarantee the one hit KO. Petalberg Woods, I stole your package. And then you're going to show me some gratitude. Give me the repeat ball. And I'm not probably not going to be doing a lot of catching on repeats, though. Alright, so we come through here. This is where I was talking about. We're going to get the HM. Come here. Rock Smash, he's so thankful because he's able to get back with his love of his life that he gives you an HM4 strength. Now, how do how does the regular man just get access to an HM like that where um, technically this is the only way in the region that I know of of getting it unless somebody would have told me, hey, I got HM04. And then where are these people getting the HMs from? It's crazy. All right, Wismer, like I said, which actually you could use. You could use on that third gym battle because of the soundproof ability. You wouldn't know that that was useful unless you gotta really look at this stuff and think about it. It's, it's funny how they how they design a lot of this stuff. But okay, so we got Ozmarils almost at thirty. Like I said, I think I can go all the way to fifty. I think I go all the way to fifty before the next gym battle. And here we go, Azumarill's here. Go ahead and hit the bubble beam on him. All right, cool, so. Speeding through this area. I feel like the Macho Brace is in this town somewhere. I'm like, why? Why do I feel like I'm missing it? It's here. I'm not. I'm not gonna cheat though. I'm not gonna look it up. But anyway, so our Azumarill's ready. Our Makahita is already getting ready for the fifth gym. Honestly, I don't even know if the Makahita is gonna be ready. We're gonna see. This could be embarrassing by the time we get to Norman. I'm telling you all this stuff to get ready for Norman, but I think the Makahita will be ready for Norman. Let's see. I mean, we got what we need. We got our bulk up. We got our vital throw. We got him at Hariyama. Um, defense is 35. Anyway, let's, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's focus on what we're doing now. We're trying to get this fourth gym badge here, so... We're gonna go back up here through the. We're gonna go through the mountains up here, ride the lift for the first time, since it just unlocked. All right, come up here, 
and come up this way and then we're going to get to the point where we could get that meteorite um, later on there will be trainers here that you can battle but yeah it's looking like it's an all out war going on up here alright Zubat let's go ahead and roll out yeah, let's. Just, I know that's the slower, the slower way to get through this, but I mean, I don't. They're not gonna knock us out, and I got that critical hit too, so they're definitely in love with me and the super effective attack with um with the huge power. That's gonna that's gonna knock out easy. That's great. All right, Azumarill, we're gonna go ahead and hit the bubble beam on him. Super effective, so these fights, yeah, definitely very easy. Kuchina, I was gonna say he shouldn't survive that, I don't believe. And then we could roll out here just to get something going for that last Pokemon. Hit him with a heart attacking move here. Um, but of course, it is gonna miss. I'll decide the bubble beam here. Okay, so got that. And now I'm trying to remember what level I need to be at for this next, this fourth gym battle here. Because I don't think Azumarill is going to be behind by doing the share. I did a little bit of share on XP. Let's see, Mighty Ina is only 24, so they might not expect me to be too high for this, this next gym battle. I'm thinking 29. I think Norman's Pokemon is at 29. And this should lower some speed. Alright, I'm going to go for rollouts then since you want to do this. That was a critical hit. That's good. And I flinched. Okay. Well, we, we should. We should just super potion. Nah, I thought the bubble beam knocked the speed down so the bike doesn't control me as much. But he's got my accuracy down or something? Like, what's going on? <laughs> oh, boy. The speed drop. Let's try this to see what happens. Okay, I am faster there. Surprising, though, because the dog is very fast. They were really trying to bite lock me on that. They're funny. The wing attack hits, bubble beam, try to control speed, come on. And then what we got next, camera up, so we should be good there. We won the speed battle there. Alright, woo, okay, why, why was he giving me a little bit of a hard time there? And so, thank you, with our help we thwarted him, whose size you gonna remain visual, we shall meet again. But it's funny that they would not move, remove the meteor right. Unless it's impossible at this point in the story. Okay, I remember. Okay, so later in the story, you can remove the meteor right. I can't remember why you cannot move it there. Alright, so we're getting further in the little hiker. Hiker area, so that way we can get to the gym. So they do put a Machop here, in case you want to use Machop and teach it bulk up and all that stuff. So that's another option. That is going to require a little bit more work than just getting the Makahita from the beginning. Obviously, because, I mean, I don't know, I don't think that Machop's higher than level 20, 24. So maybe maybe it wouldn't cause that much work. We'll, we'll take a look and see what level the, mock, the Machop is in this area. The new male is level 22, so that's good. It's good experience, depending on if you got a level 24 monster or something. Another new male, but we, we really just want to see what the Machops are. We don't really have space to be changing around teammates, because once you start doing that, yeah, I thought it was a level 20. Which means I would have had to work harder to get that back up and ready. 
for the next gym battle because as you can see the Makahita is evolved into a Hariyama now but that lets me know now I'm thinking about it ooh this is a bad matchup why did I leave it man that lets me know that I really should quick claw work for me I really should have the Makahita at level 28 before I move forward that's what that's reminding me of because the Ma Chop would have got to Ma Choke at level 28, and then that would have been perfect for it to fight the gem. So we need to make sure this Makahita is somehow at level 28, and I'm trying to figure out which way did I go to get the experience for this. I think I'm going to go ahead and experience share some more. Just because I don't really see a place that I want to sit back and grind. For that that XP, we want to try to keep the game moving smooth. And if we get the XP share, I I think this is a good spot to to use it to reduce grinding and other portions of the game. I think the Ozma reel is going to be fun because the Quick Claw is working well in a lot of a lot of instances. I'm actually getting some procs on it when I know that I should not be faster. Like right there, maybe maybe not. I don't know if I should be faster there. Water gun. I should be faster than the camel though. Camels are slow and so is that one. Alright. Burn heal. Let's see. Alright. So now we've got... An electric and Okay. So not a good matchup at all, but we could dig dig fly here. I mean, not fly, but we will get there eventually with Swallow. Let's see what the Magnemite chooses. Oh, it chose the super effective path that way. A little double team here. All right, cool. I like the fact that the Azumarill does have the dig, even though I haven't been using it much, because like I said, when I do more double battles later in the game, it gives me an extra dimension to play around to help my team stay alive. I'm just going to water gun, and it gives me a critical hit. Lucky. Good, because I didn't really feel like using um, any more bubble beams right now, even though we're pretty much at the town. And there's a nugget coming up that we can pick up here on the side of this mountain. But I choose not to do it. I like talking to this guy even though he doesn't do anything. He's just so frantic running back and forth. X speed in battle. Okay. Now see there's another thing that you could possibly do here too. Is I think they wanted you to use um, the egg that you get. Let's see, we don't have anybody we could put back for this egg. But there's an egg here. Let's see, if you took the egg, I think that would be your fighting Pokemon spot instead of Makahita. Um, that will, that will give you a whooper. Um, and that does sound very underwhelming, but it does have the access to counter. And the counter from whooper does a lot. It literally will KO you. It doesn't sound like it's supposed to, but it really just will. Um, there's a move I could learn here, I forget. Let's see, somebody does teach a move. I'm forgetting what what move did they teach here. And I think it's it's a move that's good for the 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 whopper. Who teaches the move? Hmm. Yeah, I can't remember. Was one of y'all? Is it the guy? I think it's the guy. Is it you, girl? I know somebody teaches um, a move here. Charcoal. Oh, I forgot charcoal was right there. Good, we can burn up some stuff later. Hmm, huh, that's interesting. I thought mimic. 
Yeah. So I don't know who should learn Mimic. I think that move is meant for the Whopper. You hit um, the Whooper or whatever you want to call it. But anyway, we're at the fire type gym. Let me sure I got my PP straight. All right, cool. We got so many moves that just deal with fire. The dig is overkill. But I just wanted to put it on a Pokemon. Usually I save it because maybe I might decide, hmm, this might be a good utility move for this Pokemon later. But right now we should be able to breeze through these. Yeah, their levels are very low. So it's good that we are doing Spirit Share. I honestly feel comfortable doing a Water Gun on the Slugmas, but I um, mean, see, that was a little bit risky, but now I'm about to hit level 30. So that should give me a bit more comfort on trying to um, throw those out there. And here we go. All right. Double battle, hiker and a flyer, a fire breather. I'll uh, just go ahead and hit the slugma with that, and then oh, the new male almost got KO'd, almost. Norman hit level 25. Good. I know I need to at least, like I said, at least want to be 28 before we get to Norman. And there's, to me, there's not a lot of room in left in there to find really good spots to level before Norman. And I guess that's why it makes, um, Norman seems like definitely the hardest gym boss in the game. Just because there's not a lot of spots that if you didn't prepare or you didn't get enough experience or you didn't get the right Pokemon by this time, you're probably not going to be ready for him. I can see that. Having a fighting type ready by that time just doesn't seem practical. So, I can understand. But you could always do what I did to discover some of these easier ways to play. I mean, you just literally start over the game and then take your time and pay attention to some things. And you will learn more when you have a different intention when you're going through playing. And that that's what I did. I, it's not like I looked up anything on the internet, which you could easily do that with these games. They're so old. You could look up all the stuff. But I just said, hey, let me, let me try something here. Let me let me take my time, go back through this, pay attention, see what are they giving me that is useful to just make sure I'm not missing anything. And so we're getting through this. It's trying to remember the holes. You go through here and then you do want to drop through the second hole. Um So this is wrong. Yeah, I messed up there. I figured that was that was wrong. I'm trying to remember um, where to go. Going up here, going there. Go up. We're gonna go through the middle. That's right. And then you just have to go through the second part. No. Okay, I almost messed it up. I see how they want you to jump over the ledge there just so you had an opportunity to mess it up and yeah we got our Osmo Reel ready to go at level 30 so level 30 Osmo Reel with bubble beam dig water gun roll out by the time you get the Flannery which I don't know if people thought Flannery was hard or not but it just I think just in general a lot of people thought this game was very tough and it can be because if, if you got to do very specific things to make the game easy, maybe it's tough or maybe it's just you have to learn the specific things. Versus some of the other Pokemon games, you don't really need to learn anything specific to get through them easily. You can just play how you want to play, pick what you want to pick, and things just seem to turn out okay. Alright, so now we are getting yeah, the Torquoil. He's got some uh, special D on him. But... Here we go. And that is it for Flannery. So I'm going to make another video talking about how to prepare for Norman. And um, if you want to see that, make sure to check out the channel. It'll probably just be a normal video. 
But either way, thanks for watching the stream. I hope you enjoy. Leave a comment. Tell me what else you want to see on the channel.